Welcome back, guys, to the Baseball Rebellion Breakdown of the Week. And today, uh, I, J.K. Whited, am going to give you the outfielder from Vanderbilt, who's predicted to go number one or number two in the draft, first position player in the draft for sure. Uh, his name is Jaron Kendall. He's a junior this year. He's about 5'11", 180 pounds or so, depending on what website you go to. And uh, we're going to break down his swing because, again, uh, he's one of those guys that has been, you know, passing the eyeball test for a while. He's got super speed and athleticism. His numbers in SEC last year were really good. He hit 332 with a uh, on-base percentage of 396, a slugging 568. Uh, let me see here. What else? Uh, he hit nine jacks with 20, 16 doubles and um, 59 RBI. So, I mean, obviously he's a good player in the SEC, which not a lot of people can say. So, um, but his strikeouts are pretty high. He hit 62 strikeouts, and that was the big thing I read about him when I was looking him up because I hadn't really seen him hit too much. You'd heard about him, you know, kind of through watching ESPN and, and you know, following baseball in college. But, you know, his swing is, is something that I think is going to get him eventually where he either fixes it or doesn't. If he doesn't, he's got some problems, and I'm going to show you why. And this, I think this is a big, big part of why he, he strikes out or mishits a lot of balls, um, not because he's, he's not good, obviously, but because of some of how his upper body mechanics work, which I think come from a lot of coaching and, and him trying to do what his coaches want him to do, and, and, and maybe some things that he would have been better at had he been left alone to be the good athlete that he is. And I think it's really going to help him, or, or, or not help him, but, but it's really going to get him to struggle more as he gets older and faces better pitching, which is the great equalizer. You know, there's a lot of things you can do in college with a metal bat that you can't do in the big leagues with wood. And so there's some, some upper body flaws that I think are going to get him, along with some lower body flaws, which we're going to get into now. So I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the video all the way through. You're going to see him, uh, you're going to see him go through his swing here and at kind of full speed so that we can get a look at it first without any any stopping and breaking down. Um, you're going to see a pretty good move forward. It's not maybe as athletic and aggressive as I'd like to see, but but it's pretty good. Um, also got a good back view here as well that um, we're going to see for another reason. I want to try to illustrate something else for you guys. But, you know, the, it was tough to find video of him where he wasn't like rolling a ball over or swinging and missing, and he wasn't able to to generate really any early bat speed um, or any lift on the ball either. Now, I'm not saying there isn't one out there, but a lot of the video that I saw where you see these montages of a kid for Team USA or a perfect game where you see, you know, a handful, 20 swings sometimes, BP swings, game swings, I didn't really see any of um, any great swings in any of those. And so it wasn't like I'm just cherry-picking swings to, to break down and bash people with. Uh, I'm, I'm picking swings that I see, I feel like, are what he does most. And this is what he does most, okay? So as he goes through his stride, he's got a, a pretty decent back elbow row back towards the dugout. So you see how he's, his hands move back. But what a lot of people see is the hands, right? They see the hands move back behind that box that I just drew. But what you don't really see is how the elbow pulls the hands back behind him. So he's moved more, more or less pulling his hands with the back elbow, not trying to move his arms this way or towards the umpire, which is what is taught a lot in Little League where you try to pull your hands more backwards. Now, the hands do work away from the head in that direction, but again, it's because he's moving forward and kind of charging up and coiling in that, that upper half so that when his hips roll uh, through the swing and open up, they're going to have that really um, rubber band snap-like effect. So you can see the, the side of his jersey right here. This, this stripe on the side has got that kind of a coiled in. You can see the wrinkles in his jersey right here. So he's doing a good job of, of coiling in that back hip as he prepares to turn. So I don't know if he does that naturally or was taught that. A lot of good athletes are good athletes because they figure that stuff out on their own at some point. Um, some have to be taught, but a lot of them figure it out whether they're just naturally gifted and understand how to move or, like I said, they were taught. But um, he does a good job of letting his knee kind of move in as he goes through his landing. And at, at landing point, his hip is coiled back. And we're going to talk about his upper half because I think his upper half is – is probably the worst part of what he does, but we're gonna get to that in a second. As he lands, you can see how his foot, front foot is very straight, um, which is or very pointed in towards the towards the plate, and that's something that I would advise against him doing a lot. And you know why? Because it's gonna really lock up that 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 ankle, right? He's gonna lock up his knee. It's gonna lock up his hip, and he still tries to get good hip rotation in the swing. And a lot of these guys do because they instinctively want to rotate, they want to turn, but 
We know that he's a runner. We know that he's an outfielder. And this is only going to create long-term damage through his front side. And then eventually that affects everything else, right? That's how your body compensates for injuries. He's just going to start to ask more from, from his back muscles and things like that. And eventually his other side. And it's all kind of a big uh, snowball effect kind of a thing. So over time, I hope he learns to allow that front foot to open when he starts to open his hips. Because he's trying to open his hips. You can see him opening. But again, he's landing before he really starts to open. <clears throat> which is okay, but he's got to allow that front foot to, to work a little bit better. Um, his back hip, like I said, is coiled, and all this on the backside is actually really good, so we're good there. His head is, is pretty good over his backside. He's a little bit more over his backside than he is, obviously, over his front side, which is good. He could probably be a little bit better there, where maybe there's a slightly more of a head position over his back hip so that he can turn um, very quick, very, um, very abruptly, very sharply towards the dugout here. You know, once we land as a hitter here on the front side, the the forward part is over. And we've talked about this as a company of being better at this, and and this is part of the reason why is we want to be sharper and cleaner and quicker this direction towards the dugout. He's a left, he's a left-handed hitter, so he's trying to go towards the first base dugout. And then once we do that, obviously that's going to pull around our shoulders and hopefully pull our shoulders. And then if we allow our hands and the bat to do the right thing, you know, down back here in a, in a windmill shape, and that barrel is going to get in from behind the ball very deep, meaning close to the catcher's mitt. You can see the catcher's mitt right here. So the deeper the barrel can get um, as, and stay relative to the body with the knob uh, being very close to the shoulder, then we're going to be in a good place to, to hit a lot of balls more cleaner. And that's what we're talking about for him. Like there's power potential in him, just like there's power potential in everybody, but the cleanliness of how his upper body works in conjunction with his lower body is, is what separates the men from the boys um, to say. So what you're going to see is a really aggressive um, knob pull slash back arm push to this ball. And then on top of that, a really aggressive top hand rollover through the ball. So let's go ahead and get started. So as he goes to turn, you're going to see this really aggressive, you know, pull the knob. So you can see how his back shoulder moves very little. And his, and his hands catch up to his shoulder right here, which is a little bit um, of, of a tail that he's really aggressively pulling that, that front side and then really from then taking over with that back arm. So it looks like he's done some, some bottom hand, top hand drills where he's really aggressively using his arms and his hands to generate bat speed. But the problem is, is he doesn't. The bat stays, his first move of his bat is is not down back behind his shoulder like you see all the really good hitters and you know we've done we've downloaded and 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 broke down a lot of those guys for you so you're going to see that bat work behind their shoulders but you don't see that where do you see his bat go his bat's going to work more towards the ball aggressively now you see his barrel go through those arrows but the problem is is it's more flat through his shoulder instead of back down and around towards his numbers on his back and so that knob pull, you can see him pulling here, is going to get him to get to this position. And, you know, the thing about it is if you saw this picture alone, you'd be like, oh, this is pretty good. You know, it's not great, but it looks like he's trying to get uphill and da-da-da-da-da. But then you're going to see this next frame, and you're like, oh, boy, right? This is it. This is what he does all the time. You can see his, his arm is really straight here, downward extension. Um, you can see this really uncomfortable looking over over cuff of his of his top hand kind of around the bat I mean his knuckles are more pointed up but his wrist looks like it could really hurt and so out of necessity he has to kind of roll over um, and, and try to snap the bat again kind of like this knob pull to the front and then snapping over um, towards the dugout and that means he's actually getting ready you know more bat speed towards the coach over here on the dugout or player whoever this is um, in that direction and then that's up so like his barrel doesn't really work up tremendously until like right out in front of him and that's not what we want we want that barrel to get deep to the catcher's mitt like we talk about and then start working uphill from behind the ball uh, very griffy like in the nike check uh, you can see this nike check pattern that we see you can see his back go from above his head you know from there boom right to this point here like he skips all those other arrows and so he can't generate any bat speed until out in front of him and that is what's going to get him if he does not figure that part out because no big leaguer has no great big league hitter i should say and they're all really good obviously they wouldn't be there but you know no no player that's that's out there in the game for a long time makes this type of move with his upper body he just does he's just they're just not doing it now it's one thing if maybe he's trying to get open on an inside pitch and it's freaking him out and he has to kind of you know maybe get the barrel to it or foul it off with two strikes but that's just not what's happening here because i saw like i said a lot of his videos in this back view is going to demonstrate it as well. You're going to see the same lower half landing closed 
All right, pretty decent hip rotation and trying to create some torque, but again, he pulls his knob away from his shoulder here. I mean, you can see his back shoulder is over here somewhere, right? You can see it right there, and then you can see his hands and his knobs below his belt and out in front of his belt, and they just shouldn't be there. They should be back here coupled with his back shoulder and elbow as they turn together, and then you'll start to see that release. But again, you can see everything out in front here, um, pushing and turning his hands over. This is one ball that I saw him actually elevate, um, and, and, they, and they elevated it foul because, again, when you turn your hands over out in front, you can see the bat's almost facing the camera at this point, and he, he pulls it foul, and this is really the only way to generate any lift with this type of swing. So the home runs they did hit, I would really like to see. I bet they were mostly pull side and down the line. Like It's tough for him to probably drive balls to center or left field because his hands don't turn over until way out in front of him, and that's not where we want to create barrel snap. We want to create barrel snap back this direction, right? Back this direction, down through uh, the catcher's mitt and, and behind his body. Again, this is only a two-dimensional drawing, so I can't show you the bat coming more down, kind of back here behind his elbow, but you don't see it because he doesn't do it. He pulls the knob uh, away from his shoulder right here. And you can see that go from, you know, okay, well, everything's pretty close to his shoulder to, uh-oh, there it goes, there it goes, and then it's way out in front of him. So, you know, he's an athletic kid who is, can probably be trained to do things, but it looks like he's been trained to do this a lot. It looks like he's in a cage with college coaches who, who frankly might not know exactly what we're talking about. And not that they're, they're trying to help him, but, but I think with that, with that swing mindset to, to get the knob out there and to turn and push the backhand and roll is going to be a big problem, and what, which is why he struggles with the wood bat a little bit and why the scouts are like, hey, you know, he swings and misses a lot, and he's going to be asked to, to handle the bat as an outfielder and probably a center fielder, you're going to have to, to make a little bit more solid, more consistent contact. And when the ball doesn't get behind the baseball or into the pass soon enough, you're not going to be able to do that. So there you go. There's there's his swing, and there's what I think his big flaws are. I would give him maybe a B with the lower half to B+. Plus, and, then, and then, you know, a pretty pretty bad grade. A, probably a D uh, and, and maybe even an F maybe for a kid at, at this level uh, who's going to be a, a first-round pick. Uh, and get paid a lot you know he's going to get picked probably primarily off of his speed and his arm strength which is fine those play you know those play at the highest levels too but but it's really not going to be something that lasts I don't think because he's just going to be so hard for him to hit and, and you got to be able to hit you know every player hits you know outside of a catcher maybe you, you kind of maybe let it let it let, let that go but he's going to be asked to hit too much and hopefully he figures this part out gets in the right hands and he's probably super uh, teachable and he can learn it and, and move it the better, uh, but it's going to take some time, and he's going to have to figure that out pretty quick because I think he's going to see some some problems with some good pitching. So there you go. Uh, there's Jaron Kendall. What kind of a different breakdown for you guys today? Someone who maybe isn't a Hall of Famer or you know, obviously a, a, a longtime big leaguer. And I hope you guys can see what I'm seeing and maybe avoid teaching some of that knob to the ball back. You know, front hand pull, backside push uh, around with your hands at the front end of the or the the very end of the swing and. And that's something that, uh, that keeps a lot of guys down. So there you go. Please comment at the bottom of this if you have any questions about what I saw. And I look forward to doing this again and seeing you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks.